is Patty. I just want to give you three tips for helping you to support your child to understand confession. I think we first of all have to see confession or reconciliation as we often call it um, within the context of the fact that God loves us so much. It's his unconditional love for us. And I think the best way to understand this is to think about our love for our children. We know, we understand that. We understand at human level how we feel about our children. You know, our children will sometimes disappoint us, um, but it never stops us loving them. We, we, we still love them. We might not like what they do, but we really still love them. And if we know we feel like that about our children, then how much more does God feel about us that way? Because his love is so much more enormous than our love for us. So we have to have we have to try to understand that. We have to try to understand his, his love. Uh, a line I love, or a phrase I love about this is, is um, loved and forgiven. That's, that's a great strap line we often use uh, relating to, to confession or reconciliation. Because through it, we really can understand that we are totally loved and forgiven for those times when we, you know, we get it wrong and we do mess up all the time, don't we? in our relationships and in, in things that we say and the things that we do. So that's the first thing, it's, it's, it's seeing everything in that context that God loves us so much and he'll always forgive us. Secondly, it's being prepared to say sorry. That, that's the second thing. You know, I'm, I'm quite old now um, and most people don't remember this, but there was a, a great film called Love Story years ago when I was a teenager, everybody wants to go and see it. And the strap line for that film was, love means never having to say you're sorry. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's absolute bunkum. You know, actually, love means being prepared to say you're sorry again and again and again. And it often demands that of you. Um, you know, you'll know that about with your relationships with your partners and, or relationship with your children or your own parents. You're constantly having to say sorry. And it's so, it's making that step to say you're sorry and being prepared to do that. So it's helping your child to understand that that is, a, is such a good thing to do. Not only perhaps talking to them about that, but again, it's back to this business of role modeling. We have to show them how easy it is, if you like, it's not always easy, but we have to show we are ready to say we're sorry. So they need to see us saying sorry. We sometimes need to say sorry to our children you know, ourselves, if we've lost the, our temper with them or, or whatever. And we need to encourage them to say sorry quickly um, and, and, and own what they've done. So saying sorry is the second big thing about understanding the sacrament of confession, because that's a big part of it. I think the third thing then is being brave and open and honest and being able to look at our lives and, and know what things we do wrong. You know, we all do things wrong and we need to help our children to be able to be brave and open and honest. And this is obviously something that's to do with our relationship with our child. They need to know they can get things wrong. And then going back to the unconditional love, we will still be loved. If they understand that, then they will have a better chance of knowing that an ever loving God will also forgive them for what they've done wrong. So. We've got to encourage our children to be brave, to be open and honest about looking at their lives and the things that they tend to get wrong. So it's having those open conversations. You might again be a role model by saying, I know I tend to get crabby with you a lot. I know I tend to shout at you a lot when you, when you do this. That's a constant failing I've got. That's something I need to say sorry to you for. So you've got to, to be a role model. And they need to see you saying sorry to, to your wife or your husband or your partner or your, your mother or your father, they need to see you doing that and, and owning the things that you tend to get wrong. So I think they're, they're the key building blocks, I think, from under, for, for understanding the process of confession. Um, obviously, when you go to confession or reconciliation, there's a priest. The priest is there for Christ. He's, he's, it's not him, you, you know, you, you've got to realise that he's just there to, 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 for, to give you God's forgiveness, to absolve you from your sins. And we do that, obviously, by saying a sincere prayer that we're sorry. 
and then he will give you the, uh, say, a prayer of absolution when you say that prayer too. But we have to be able to feel we can be open and honest about what we've done wrong and not let that get in the way. The priest is not there to judge you. The priest won't judge you. The priest is there to do that role. He sometimes might give you a little bit of advice. He might give you, he might uh, help you to, to encourage you in, in dealing with that thing that you do tend to do wrong. But that's not really what he's there for. He's there to, to give you that sacrament. And the end is that you know that you can walk out of that sacrament, that you've been freed from those things that have been weighing you down. You're free of those sins. That God still loves you. He forgives you. And that you know you've got that gift of forgiveness from him. So here are the questions. 